Launceston suburb. In its shallow pools of stagnant water, mosquitoes breed. After a few days of hot weather, these wrigglers will become adult mosquitoes, ready to make a nuisance of themselves. In every town there are places which are breeding grounds for pests and vermin and disease. The local refuse dump or tip is usually the source of greatest trouble with its rats, germs, smells and flies. The greatest danger to health comes from flies. Wherever filth is found you'll see them feeding. Germ-laden filth is their usual food outdoors. They spread the germs of dysentery and typhoid fever. They're suspected of carrying poliomyelitis. When they're bred in diseased matter, the germs of that disease remain with them for life. Let's look at one of these menaces close up. The hairs on his body and legs pick up germs wherever he lands. Flies will contaminate our food if it's left unguarded. As they inspect the food, germs drop from their body and hairy legs and are scattered over it. Before eating, they vomit on the food to soften it. Their vomit is full of germs collected at their previous eating place. To complete the dirty work, they leave their germy droppings on the food. You might remember this bag. It's the emblem of our junior Chamber of Commerce. We organized the clean-up campaign in Launceston recently based on the things you have just seen. This is our publicity committee which planned the details. Their object was to make people aware of the threats to health that existed in the city. The Public Health Department, through Dr. Turnbull, donated £100 towards the cost of the campaign and gave us 10,000 leaflets and hundreds of posters which were displayed in shop windows everywhere. For the spraying program on Germ Destruction Day, Launceston Chemical Distributors and Manufacturers Agents gave us great quantities of sprays and disinfectants free of charge. I had the pleasant task of receiving it into our temporary store. Our members visited all the schools in the city and suburbs and spoke to the children about the importance of cleanliness at home and at school, with special emphasis on the danger of flies. Essay competitions were held too. Here are some of the winners receiving their prizes. Beverly Camp of Launceston State High School won the big prize, a return flight to Melbourne with Antet Airways and a book. Nine-year-old Graham Burley from Trevallin School won a trip to Hobart. He travelled there alone. In his essay, he said it's hard to understand why flies were created to be such a menace. Julie Cridge of Glendew School won a trip to Hobart too. We were greatly amused by her essay. This is what she wrote. Our enemy, the fly. 
Hello folks, I'm Flossie Fly. I live with my husband and my 150 children in the rubbish heap at the bottom of Brown's gut. We always have plenty to eat because the Browns don't have any wire screens on their windows or doors or cover their food over. We can eat whenever we feel like it. Johnny Brown and Baby Brown have been very good friends of ours because Johnny always has jam and food on his face and fingers. He doesn't bother washing off them. We can always get a drink of milk from Baby Brown's bottle, which is usually left on the kitchen table when she goes to sleep. We heard today that both are very ill and have gone to hospital. Someone said that it was because we had crawled on their food so much. Peculiar things, these mortals. I thought they were tough. Who? What's that horrible smell? There's a man spraying around the house. Come on, children, let's get out of this. It's no use going to the smiths next door, as they're awfully fussy. A fly would die of starvation if she had to rely on them for food. Fly wire screens on every door and window, disinfectant drains, and always spraying their rooms. They make me furious. With so many mouths to feed, we fly mothers have to go where there's plenty of food available. Well, goodbye, folks. We'll be seeing you, if you're not careful. With newspaper and radio publicity keeping the public interested in the campaign, the committee meets informally to settle the details of Germ Destruction Day, the main feature of the project. On that day particularly, everyone would be asked to wage war on flies and pests at home, while teams of volunteers would clean up or neutralize for the summer the outside danger areas. As the post office clock strikes seven on this Saturday, November the 12th, JCs and city councilmen gather at their rendezvous in St. John Street to load their trucks with kerosene and modern sprays. 250 gallons of kerosene, 60 gallons of disinfectant, and 50 gallons of deodorant and DDT will be sprayed on drains and ditches and rubbish dumps within two hours. 25 knapsack sprays will be used and 14 types of spray units. The men will work in squads of six. Each squad will be allotted a different area of Launceston to clean up. Each truck driver gets his orders. You will locate open drains and smelly ditches, treat them with DDT. Douse mosquito breeding areas with kerosene. Use deodorant on all the fly breeding areas. All over Launceston, men are at work. Here, a pond is being sprayed with kerosene. A thin film of kerosene on the surface of the water prevents mosquito larvae breathing, and they'll die. At Trevallon and Marawale, at Inveresk and in Mayfield, at Ravenswood, Cormiston and Newstead, and at other places, these scenes are occurring simultaneously. A curbside drain that needs attention is sprayed with DDT. A filthy ditch receives some disinfectant. The swamp at Mowbray and other marshlands are sprayed. And all the rubbish dumps are treated with the long-lasting spray Dialdrin.
The city council trucks patrolled suburban streets, spraying and clearing away all rubbish. In many homes, the people did their share too. Now the teams have finished and are making back to town to take part in the parade. We are certain the results of their work will show before the summer is over. disinfectant was distributed to all who brought an empty bottle and a little more propaganda was introduced against our enemy, the flies. 